Something strange is happening with Tech Interview. The company that created ChatGPT is now testing candidates on ChatGPT's mistakes. Google, the king of remote work, is now forcing people back to whiteboard coding. And Amazon is rejecting half of their candidates for being too good at coding. Hearing all this, I spent around three months to actually figure out what is actually happening right now in tech interviews. After talking to dozens of hiring managers and interview query members, I've pinpointed the three major trends that are reshaping how big tech is thinking about hiring. All right, let's pretend to rewind to 2019. You're an engineer about to jump on a tech interview with a pretty predictable formula. You might be grinding leak code or a platform like Interview Query for months, memorizing every binary tree traversal and dynamic programming pattern. Then you would fly out to Silicon Valley for a full day marathon, five back-to-back -back interviews in sterile conference rooms with whiteboard coding sessions and executives asking you leadership interview questions. There was no Google, there was no Stack Overflow, and most importantly, there was no help from anyone else. This interviewing process was a gold standard for determining whether someone could join a big tech company and make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Then 2020 hit like a freight train. Companies that had never conducted a single video interview suddenly had to hire entirely through computer screens and the transformation was absurd. By October of 2020, a Gartner survey showed that 89% of businesses used video interviews for recruiting talent. Recruiters quickly realized that they didn't have to fly candidates across the country or book six people in one conference room for a mega day on site. Now candidates would hop from one Zoom call to another across a week or two, greatly reducing logistical overhead. And this was a utopia of interviewing for companies because now they had a standardized formula plus convenient video interviews for both candidates and interviewers. But then late in 2022 arrived a plot twist no one saw coming, ChatGPT launched, and the entire foundation for tech interviews changed. Now here's the thing, if you remember when ChatGPT first launched, it wasn't really good at everything. In those early days, it could write code that looked impressive, but had subtle bugs and the reasoning engine hadn't yet been developed, so it couldn't handle complex system design questions or case studies. But of course, AI got scary good very fast. By 2024, ChatGPT could solve almost any coding interview question flawlessly. And that's when the real chaos began. Because what started as a few tech-savvy candidates getting a little help has turned into a full-blown arms race between companies trying to catch cheaters and candidates using it to increasingly sophisticated AI tools to game the system. Let's start with the numbers, because honestly, they're pretty shocking. Conservative estimates just suggest that 1 in 10 candidates are using some form of AI assistance during interviews. But as previously mentioned, Amazon is seeing up to 50% of users with secret AI usage in their recent interviews. And startups are reporting that over 20% of their take-home assignments are coming back suspiciously perfect. One CTO that I talked to described how his team would catch cheaters with ChatGPT reflected in their glasses during the video interviews. Another hiring manager told me about candidates reading AI-generated scripts so obviously that you could see them looking away at responses on the side of their screen. And this goes beyond just lazy candidates trying to skip studying. We're now talking about sophisticated fraud operations. There are now cheating as a service tools that use generative AI to feed candidates answers during live interviews. And some candidates are even using deep fakes and impersonators for interviews as well. This AI invasion has forced companies into what I call the great retreat, pulling back into methods that they believe are cheat proof. And it's created a massive philosophical split in the industry. As I explained in my last video, many companies have discovered that there's a real threat of North Korean engineering teams infiltrating their companies using AI to cheat through the interview. For example, I even talked to one remote first company where the company's security consultant detected unusual IP address activity at different times of the day from a certain worker. When they investigated, they realized they had unfortunately hired a North Korean engineer unknowingly. And the scary part is that these aren't just random scammers. They are organized operations that provide genuinely good work to avoid detection. Remote-only companies are now slowly discovering that they've been infiltrated months after the fact, and by that point, it's too late to stop. The code injections are hidden malware. But the big problem for big tech companies is that they have these golden, standardized interview processes that have worked for years, and now they just don't work anymore. Some big tech companies' approach has been to preserve and protect. They're fighting tooth and nail to keep their closed book algorithmic tests, but now with massive surveillance. For example, at Google, candidates have been reported keeping cameras on at all times, screen sharing everything, and facing follow-up questions designed to catch AI usage. Companies are also using advanced proctoring with eye tracking, copy-paste detection, and screen recording. But Meta has actually gone really creative with their anti-cheating strategy. For example, here's an actual question that they're giving to data science and data analytics candidates. Let's say we have Instagram shop with three ways users can access it. 
through the tag post feature, through the shop tab, and through brand profile pages. How would you do data analysis to find the best growth opportunities? Can you brainstorm ways to improve the product? Now, let's say the conversion rate on the add to cart button is super low. What analysis would you do to find the problem? And if there was a bug on the add to cart page, what segmentation would you do to figure out if it's a bug and what the bug was? See what they're doing there? It's a sprawling interconnected problem that requires a lot of product thinking and building upon the previous answers and not just straight up code generation. AI can help with the pieces, but it can't walk through that entire analytical framework coherently as it builds upon previous answers. Now here's a look from the other side. OpenAI, and this is absolutely wild, is actually giving their candidates ChatGPT written code and asking them what's wrong with it. The logic is kind of brilliant. If AI is part of the job, why not test how well you can work with AI? and they wanna see if you can actually spot AI's mistakes and improve on its solutions. But specifically, OpenAI and other companies like Snapchat and Stripe are moving to take-home challenges. For example, Stripe for their take-home assignment will now give you a realistic problem like building part of a payment processing system, and they explicitly tell you to use whatever tools you want. The evaluation isn't based on whether you wrote perfect code from scratch, but on your architectural decisions, your documentation, and how you explain your choices. And then there are the startups that are doing things that would have been unthinkable just two years ago. One AI startup I know gives candidates access to their internal AI tools during the technical interview and evaluates them based on how quickly they can use those tools to solve problems. Startups are also more open to try paid trials and run interview assessments like AI pair programming interviews. And during these paid trials, they'll ask questions like, do you know how to prompt it effectively? Can you catch its mistakes? Can you actually build a feature that's in our Jira Sprint right now? And can you actually iterate and ship the solution? But at the end of the day, all of this corporate panic is actually creating a lot of unintended consequences. One of them is that it's actually creating harder and harder interview problem sets. Companies are retreating to what they think AI can't fake, and the bar has shifted approximately one standard deviation higher everywhere. I've heard of some companies that are just custom creating problems that AI actually can't solve, which is making it for a really, really hard coding interview question if you actually aren't using AI. But additionally, companies are leaning heavily into behavioral interviews because they're basically cheat proof as well. For senior roles, 90% of the differentiation now comes from behavioral and leadership assessments rather than coding ability. You can't fake a lot of your past experience with AI because they will now run reference checks with your past teammates to see if it's actually been done. Additional unintended consequence is that the team matching process has now become a hidden filter. Meta, for example, eliminated their three week bootcamp program when you first started the company. Now they require you to match with a team before you actually get an offer. And what used to be a candidate friendly has become another screening hurdle where many candidates won't even team match and actually lose their offer. I also know someone who passed all technical rounds at Meta with strong feedback, but then waited four months in team match limbo. And by the time they finally got a match, all their competing offers had expired and they had no negotiating power. But the most telling retreat of it all is the fact that a lot of companies are going back to pedigree-based hiring, and this is most effective at the resume screening level. They're reverting to brand name signals like top colleges and prestigious companies because traditional skill-based assessments are now compromised. And with the complete depth of standardization, each company is now moving to creating their own unique methods to combat AI cheating, and candidates have no idea what to expect anymore. Even within the same company, different teams are taking different approaches. At Amazon, some teams still do traditional coding interviews, while others have moved to work simulation exercises. You might prep for weeks assuming you'll get traditional algorithm questions, only to show up and find out that they want you to review AI-generated code instead. And at Microsoft, some groups are experimenting with open book technical discussions, while others maintain strict no AI policies. The trust gap between employers and candidates has never been wider. Every time a company discovers they hired someone who was cheating or fraudulent and reinforces suspicion about future candidates, and every time a candidate faces some bizarre non-standard interview process, it reinforces their belief that they need to use AI to just have a chance. So where does that all leave us? Tech interviews in 2025 are complete chaos and we're still trying to figure it out. We went from a predictable system to every company making up their own rules as they go. And the irony is AI was supposed to make hiring more efficient, but instead it's created this paranoid fragmented mess. The real tragedy isn't the cheating, it's that we're creating a system where entry level talent can't break in, where your college name matters more than your skills, and where the process is so unpredictable that candidates feel they need to cheat to just have a chance. But here's the thing, whether you're facing traditional lead code grinding at Google or AI collaborative interviews at progressive companies, you still need to be prepared for both worlds. 
The rules keep changing, but the fundamentals of problem solving and technical communication remain crucial. And that's exactly why we built Interview Query. While some companies are testing pure data structures and algorithms, and other companies are testing if you can work with AI, you're still gonna need a platform to actually centralize all of your interview prep and understand what companies are actually asking today. Our goal is to actually source real time what the actual interviews look like at these top tech companies. And we have over 5,000 plus companies on our platform. We've just rolled out our AI powered mock interviews that adapt to your skill level in real time. And our company specific question banks now track what Google, Meta, and Amazon are actually asking right now, updated monthly based on real candidate feedback. Plus our new AI coding assistant helps you practice working with AI tools during technical problems. So you're ready to, for companies that embrace the new reality. You can practice with our live mock interview feature with the real engineers, get detailed feedback on your system design thinking and access our behavioral interview simulator that preps you for those crucial leadership questions. I've been working on interview query for six years now. And the most important thing I think is to find an easy, cheap solution that you can practice on your own. Our goal at the end of the day is to personalize your interview experience, depending on your background, whether you're entry level or very senior candidate. And we're getting closer and closer to that with a lot of the AI tools that we're releasing. So please check it out. And if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. And I really appreciate the feedback because that helps me understand what videos you guys want next and I can do it at an ever increasing pace on this YouTube channel. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.